We'll, uh, we'll move on from there, and we will jump into the Cincinnati Bengals, who is uh, another one of Chris's teams, if only for the fact that his boy Joe Burrow is the quarterback there. Um, and this is the Bayou. This is the new Bayou Bengals, baby. It, it kind of seems like it. Doesn't it? <laughs> kind of seems like it. it. They um, they were four eleven and one last year, and they were in some super tight games. Defense couldn't stop anybody. Burrow, you know, had to had to create some playmakers and whatnot. But they, I mean, they quickly got the offense going. You know, T. Higgins showed up. They they figured some things out on that offense, and I think it's just a, another step in the right direction. Hopefully, he comes back. You know, fully healthy. All reports are he's perfectly fine, but we shall see. They needed tackle. Yeah. They needed wide receiver. They needed guard. They needed tight end. They needed defensive tackle. So basically, yeah. line help. They needed Everything a bunch of line across help. the front six. Yes, yes, on, on offense and defense, really. Um, yeah. And so with that, they went into this draft, and at pick number five, they took wide receiver Jamar Chase, who Chris and I have talked about this before. If this is your first time watching us, thirty-two percent of Burrow's sacks last year were covered sacks. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. they, he had wide receivers that could not get open. Chase is a wide receiver that can get open. I think that's going to help out a few things. He'll be able to get the ball out a little bit quicker. In round two, they did address that tackle situation. They got Jackson Carmen out of Clemson. Round three, Joseph Fasai out of Texas, edge rusher. In round four, another edge rusher, Cameron Sample out of Tulane. Defensive interior lineman, Tyler Shelvin in the fourth round out of LSU. He is a one of those old school kind of nose tackle uh, big just big man body takes kicks up off the a run. lot of space. Yes, yeah. uh, they got tackled Deontay Smith out of East Carolina in the fourth round. Then we move to the fifth round. They draft a kicker, Evan McPherson <laughs> out of Florida, which I'm not that upset about. Uh, his his coach was actually a former Bengal who still has ties to the organization. Evan McPherson could bomb him. Like he's he's a fantastic kicker. So yeah, I, you know maybe a little early for me, but eh, whatever. And then yeah. once you get into round six and seven, this is where you take flyers on guys. Center Trey Hill out of Georgia, running back Chris Evans out of uh, Michigan, and edge rusher Wyatt Hubert out of Kansas State. Uh, again, I, you know I don't have a lot of faith in the Bengals front office, but this was not a bad draft for what they they needed to accomplish. They they hit some needs. And they got some value with some of these guys. I I like what they did. Yeah, I do too. And look, there's no secret. They were dropping Joe Burrow back 55 times a game last year, which is absolutely crazy to do to a young rookie quarterback. And that's why he got his leg knocked off. So at five, the real debate was, are they going to take Panay Sewell here, which would have made total sense, or take Jamar Chase to replace the corpse of A.J. Green, whom they, gratefully for all Bengals fans, shipped off to Arizona. I love this draft. I think they nailed it on the head. They took the best player available. You take a Jamar Chase, especially a guy with such a rapport with your young quarterback. I absolutely love what they did there. And then they instantly get back in the second round, third round, fourth round, and start addressing those needs. I mean, their next one, two, three, four, five picks were offensive or defensive linemen, which is exactly what they needed to do. So I really think the Bengals are probably the second. This is a pretty good division for draft outside of the Steelers. Uh, I, the Bengals, for me, were right up there with Cleveland. I love what both teams did. Uh, good on the Bengals. They're going to be a little bit better this year. And I just, I too like Joe Burrow quite a bit. I, you know, I'm not the biggest SEC fan, or I don't really care all <laughs> that much about college football. It's too much for me. I don't know how the hell but you guys. He's, do he's a fun guy, teams. though. He's a but fun, he's a fun dude, guy. Yes. He's a talented guy. He's going Super to be likeable. very. Yeah, he is. He really is likable. He can do everything. He can run. He can throw. Uh, I like everything about this draft. I think the Bengals knocked it out of the park. Yeah, I did too. For an organization that's just kind of known for cocking it up, they they didn't mm-hmm. do that. And, mm-hmm. uh, and and Gary gave the stat that that, that I would have going to give is is thirty two percent of the sacks were coverage sacks. Listen, we saw Houston last year have the worst offensive line in football. They 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 also had the best single offensive lineman in football. Isn't that weird? Like it is weird. Like one off it, Penny Sewell wasn't going to fix this offensive line. He was not right. going to make up or account for 30% of Joe's sacks. All right. But one weapon like Jamar Chase could absolutely help affect a larger percentage of the sacks than, than one offensive lineman. So yeah. I, I, I like taking the, just the, the generational player. Yeah. And yeah. I also think that offensive, uh, that wide receiver room, that wide receiver room right now is probably one of the best wide receiver rooms, especially at the age that all those guys are. 
in in Boyd and Higgins. <coughs> Chase, oh, ow, man. I mean, you're talking if those guys can stay healthy, they could play together another six years all in their prime and, and mm-hmm. be kind of elite. That's 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 pretty scary. And then you're right. They address the offensive line outside of this. Gary and I've talked about it before. Their line was so bad because they were banged up. Now the guys that they were missing aren't great. They're not pro bowlers, but the guys coming back just to be healthy next year are going to be upgrades from what actually played last year. So yeah, sure. I'm not crazy concerned about the line. It's something you want to address. I still think they're going to throw it 55 times a game, by the way. I don't think they're stopping that. I think that's the way football is going in the NFL, man. I mean, it just really – I never in my life thought I'd see a day where these Steelers would, like, have a game that they won and they would have less than 50 yards rushing. And they had, like, three games back-to-back-to-back last year where they were, like, less than 30 yards. It was, like, 29, 28, 20 – like – this is just the way modern football is played today, man. It just right. is. And Jonah Buffalo Williams is very back. similar in that route too. Buffalo, yeah, oh, yeah. Buffalo. I never thought they would not run the football. Yeah, yeah. Um, they don't run it at, at all. The at line, all. the line for the uh, the Bengals. Jonah Williams coming back is going to be big. They signed Riley Reef to play that right tackle position uh, out of Minnesota. And say what you want about him in Minnesota, like he wasn't great, but maybe a change of scenery. Uh, uh, position change. I think he played a little guard at Minnesota, uh, but he's versatile. Like he can just move all yeah. over the place. Uh, Trey Hopkins, you know, uh, a year under his belt, looks like things may be improving for him. Um, you know, uh, we'll we'll see. I I do the, the guy in front of Reef that Reef's taking his place. That guy was that guy was just a a, a soup can. Okay, he was a nobody. <laughs> all right? right, I don't need him to be a Pro Bowl. I just need him yeah. to stand in front of dudes. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I like, will say I, this. They're going to miss William Jackson. They are going to miss yeah. William Jackson. Probably the most underrated corner in the entire league was a great signing by Washington. William Jackson was an absolute shutdown machine on a terrible defense. They didn't throw towards William Jackson. 0. 0.09 fantasy points per route ran against last year. One of the best corners in the entire league. They're going to miss him. So that could be one thing to worry about. The teams are going to be able to throw the ball a little bit on this team. I mean, you're not going to be able to fix how bad this defense was with one draft. That's just not going nope. to happen. And But they're going to miss William Jackson for sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, however, that could be part of the reason why Chris believes that they're going to be throwing the ball 55 times a ball game, times game to, uh, to yeah. chase Auden Tate, uh, uh, Stanley Morgan, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, like all those guys. They uh, – they got, they got some dudes that are going to be getting the ball, too. So uh, we will move away from the... Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.